This is a NAS, a NAS from Synology. And let me explain how it can solve all your storage issues. But first, let me explain what a NAS is and why you should get one as soon as possible. If you already have a NAS and you're looking for a beginner's tutorial how to set up this Synology NAS, then I have a link to my Synology NAS beginner's tutorial below. We all love hoarding data and that is for good reason. Yeah, I mean, all of those amazing videos and photos and everything, they have to be saved somewhere. And for the longest time, I've been using a combination of cloud storage and hard drives. Like this Samsung X5 SSD hard drive. This one is two terabyte and it's fast. It's extremely fast. It goes on Thunderbolt 3, so it's just lightning fast. You can't get that fast on any of these kind of storage, but it's super expensive. And if I don't have it plugged into my computer, I can't access anything that's on it. So that's why I need a NAS. And cloud storage like Google Drive and Dropbox, those are good as well, but it takes time to transfer things over the internet to the cloud storage. And they do string things with your files sometimes, especially when you're gonna upload, for example, a Final Cut Pro project or something, and it takes forever. And when it's almost done, then you can bet that there is some freaking kind of error in that file or that uploads, everything is just failing. That's why I got this Synology NAS. And NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. So that's what it is. Because here at the backside, here we have Ethernet ports. So we can attach this one to our network. But NAS is so much more than just some hard drives that you have put into it, because it's like an internal computer inside this one. So it runs all by itself. You don't need to plug it in anywhere. It has an internal computer with processor and everything. And it can run 24 seven. And this particular NAS, that is from Synology, as I said, and that model is DS923+. But the best thing with this is that you can access it over internet as well. Try to do that with this one. It just doesn't work. If you forget this one home in the drawer somewhere and you are out traveling, then you can't access this. But this thing, that you can access over the internet. So if I, for example, store my B-roll shots from a drone flying over a harbor that I would like to use for another kind of video, well, then I can just go into that hard drive, this Synology NAS, and then I can just download it to my computer. Sure, it's maybe gonna take a little while to do it, depending on the internet connection, but I will have access to it. And that is just fantastic. But a NAS is more than just a network attached storage device because it has one, two, three, four slots for hard drives. And what it does is that it works on something that is called RAID. And RAID stands for redundant arrays of independent disks or redundant arrays of inexpensive disks as it was in the beginning. And RAID is actually a way to store the same kind of data on multiple places. So if I put in four Four hard drives here and one of those hard drives break for some reason because hard drives does break. Well, then it's a safety copy into the other hard drives. So I can still access all my different files that I have on it without losing anything. And that's why I'm going to put in two of these Western digital hard drives. And that one is a 12 terabyte. And this one is also a 12 terabyte. That brings it to 24 terabytes. But no, I'm not gonna use it like that because one of them is gonna be backup of the other one. So if one of these ones fail well, then I'm still gonna have all my data. And as I said, this Synology NAS has four slots. That's just because when I filled up these ones, well, then I can just purchase two more and fill up. And there are different kind of RAID levels. And the different RAID levels basically means how the data that you put into these NAS is divided up between the different hard drives you have put into the NAS. And the different RAID levels can be very intimidating. So that's why I'm gonna go through the most common ones so you know what RAID level you should select when you set up your NAS. To illustrate this, I'm also gonna open up the RAID calculator that Synology have on their website so you can see exactly what I mean. And to create a RAID, you need to have at least two hard drives because if you don't have two hard drives, they can't copy files between each other and you're not gonna have any RAID. So at least two hard drives are necessary. For different kind of RAID levels, you're actually gonna need at least three or for some RAID levels, even minimum of four hard drives. The first RAID is RAID zero. RAID zero take every data that you put into this NAS, it divides it up to blocks kind of, and then it spreads out these blocks on both hard drives if you have two of them attached. 
and that makes the connection, the access and read and write speed of these hard drives improved compared to if you just have one, but you won't have any redundancy on this. So if one drive fails, then all the data will be gone because it's all divided up on two and acting kind of like one hard drive. So this is nothing that I would recommend if you just don't really care about your data and you just would like to get biggest storage possible because if you use RAID 0 for these two 12 terabyte hard drives, well then I'm gonna get 24 terabyte of storage. And then we have RAID 1. RAID 1 basically creates just duplicates of everything you have stored so all drives except just one can fail. So if you have 100 of these 12 terabyte hard drives, you're only gonna get 12 terabyte of storage because all the other ones, they are just copying off each other. So 99 of those 100 drives can fail and will still work. Then we have RAID 5 and RAID 5 are split like this. And the minimum for RAID 5 is actually three drives. So I cannot run RAID 5 with just two. RAID 5 is ideal when space and cost are most important, but performance is maybe not. RAID 6 is very similar to RAID 5. It just adds another level of stripping of the data. So the minimum you're gonna need here, that is four hard drives. So I can run this on my port two, but I don't care because I'm not gonna use RAID 6 either. But the best thing with RAID 6 is that it can sustain that two hard drives fails and you will still have all your data compared to RAID 5 where we can only sustain one hard drive failure. Next is RAID 10 and RAID 10 is a combination of RAID 0 and RAID 1 and it kind of used the benefit from both of them but only half of the space that it put into the NAS is going to be able to be used for storage. For RAID 10 we will need at least four hard drives so that makes it pretty expensive in the beginning as well. And the next thing is that you always have to buy them in pairs so you can have four but not five and you can have six but not seven hard drives. And then when we come to Synology, they have something called SHR, Synology Hybrid Drive. And SHR is there to maximize how much storage you get out of the hard drives that you put into your NAS. In general, classic RAIDs, they are basing their storage on the smallest drive you have in the unit. If the smallest drive in a classic RAID storage pool is for example 500 gigabyte, all other drives in the storage pool can only access and contribute with 500 gigabyte. It doesn't matter if I have a 12 terabyte hard drive. Unlike RAID, SHR divides the each drive's storage into smaller chunks and creates additional redundant space. And by using the same example as before, we can see that is SHR is able to divide a 4.5 terabyte of unused storage into smaller chunks that can maximize the storage capacity of each drive and that is fantastic. So if you're going to use a Synology then I really recommend that you use SHR1 or SHR2. With SHR1 it's easy to remember because that can sustain one hard drive failure and it's also very easy to calculate the storage because the only thing you need to do is to take away the biggest hard drive and then you know how, to, how much it is. So for example here where I have 12 and 12 I just take away the biggest one and then I know that I'm going to have 12 terabyte. If I would have had this 12, 12 and then a 24, well then I just take away the 24 and then I know how much storage I have left. If I have 12, 12 and 12, then they're the same size, I just take away the 12 and I know how much storage I have. SHR2 is very similar to SHR1, but with the difference that it can sustain two hard drive failures. But I only have two hard drives, so for me, my personal selection of RAID will be SHR1. And then when we have stored everything here, this Synology NAS, that is not a backup, because if I have my computer here and I have this backup here, the only backup I have that is if the hard drive of the computer breaks, but if this one burns up or something, someone steals it, then it's just still gone. So the best thing with this thing is that it also allows you to back up your data to something else. For example, if I have the similar or another Synology NAS in 
I don't know, the other side of the world, then I can synchronize those two so they are backing up to each other. And I can even have a backup, so I'm backing up everything on this onto Dropbox or Google Drive or something else. And that is a real backup because then I have these data and files that I have stored here somewhere else as well. And the best thing is, as I said, this NAS, it's just running in the background all the time. So it doesn't really matter how slow that transfer is because after a day or two or three, then all that data will still be stored on your cloud storage if you have space there. And the next thing that is to watch that video because that is the video YouTube recommended to watch next. So see you in that one. Matt says bye.